Well, 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 what do we got here? The old inverted hammer. This is the S&P 500 futures that just closed for September 21st, 2021. Upper left-hand corner, we're looking at the E-mini S&P 500 futures. I normally trade the E-micros, just keep that in mind. Looking at the December 2021 contracts, which is the most current contract. As time goes on and we move forward, let's say we get into um, late October, November, somewhere around there, I will probably switch over to the next contracts at some point, which I think are going to be February or March. I can't remember or something like that. Okay. But for now, we'll stay at the December contracts. When I get to that point and I switch over long before most people do, I'll talk about it and I'll talk about why. I kind of mentioned that before, but that's, we don't need to talk about that now. That's, you know, another month or two at least away. Okay. We got far right hand corner, got a red candlestick. The day finished in the futures market with a red candlestick. That's what we call an inverted hammer. Okay. Usually inverted hammers at the bottom or like this would, would, um, suggest we've hit a bottom and, you know, I haven't put it into this picture, but I will, when I release the video, see the vertical line there at the very, where the two green, um, arcs come together. For those that don't know about cycle analysis, look at the bottom, uh, right below the candlesticks. You'll see green arcs there. Forget about the big yellow ones. Forget about the red ones. Just focus on the green ones. Those are cycles. If you're not familiar with familiar with cycle analysis, you can pause the video and just look at it. Wherever the two semicircles come together, you'll notice there's a bottom in price. Okay. So anyway, this cycle right now is bottoming. We're like today's date is actually right at the bottom of the daily cycle. And what do we get? An inverted hammer. So normally I would say, wow, this is a great sign. We got an inverted hammer. It's looking very much like a bottom. It's happening exactly at the end of a cycle. This is thumbs up. We're going to get a reversal and we're going to get some green candlesticks going forward. And that may still happen very soon, maybe even tomorrow. But if you didn't watch yesterday's video, you should go back and watch it. I'll put the link in the description below. Okay. And in that video, I, I talk about the 75 month cycle and how we're bumping right up against it. And that cannot be ignored. <laughs> this time where we're at right now is not a normal time. I can't emphasize that enough. We are not in a normal cyclical pattern time. We're not. This one's completely different and you need to understand that. Okay. Um, I had one guy yesterday get mad at me in the, in the comment section, you know, he, he called me, he didn't call me a bad, he kind of called me a bad name and nothing too bad, you know, call me a clown. Ouch. <laughs> call me a clown. I can't take it. <laughs> uh, trolls will be trolls. Haters will hate. You know, that's the way it is. Anyway. Um, yeah, I'm not a clown though. Sometimes I clown around. Uh, we're not in normal times in the market, but we're not even in. Hey, this is going to be a, another correction. It's it's not it's even bigger than that. Now that may translate into really big, huge correction crash, and it may not. I'm just saying and putting it out there. We are definitely up against a 75 month cycle, six and a quarter year cycle. There's no disputing that in my mind. It's clear, very clear, like crystal clear. Okay, and. That doesn't always translate into big price declines, but it often does a little bit more times than not. Like, you know, probably four times out of six it does. All right, so just keep that in mind. There's, there's a large scale, very large scale influence going on that most people aren't aware of. So I really encourage you to watch yesterday's video. Okay, so anyway, on a much smaller scale here, and a smaller, I should say a shorter time frame on a daily cycle, yes, this inverted hammer would suggest we are going to see a price uh, rebound. Okay. Yesterday I said today would, would be a small to kind of medium-ish green day. It was most of the day, but it didn't finish that way. So guess what? I was wrong. By the way, stick around for the end of the video. I'll let you know whether or not I made any profit or loss considering I, I said yesterday was going to be, considering yesterday I said today was going to be a green day. 
eh, how did things go in my own trading? Hmm. Stick around for that. I'll tell you at the end of the video, okay? I want you to pay attention to the upper left-hand corner. You may not be able to see it because I know these screenshots sometimes can be hard to see, but the range was 66.5, okay? Most of it was in the upper wick of that candlestick, okay? So I want you to remember that when we get to the end of the video and I talk about my profit loss. The range for the day was 66.5. I've talked about this before and I'm gonna mention it again here today. On any given day, there is the potential for profit every single day. And why? Because every day has range, at least almost all of them. We do get occasionally get these candlesticks that are just moving sideways, sideways and they're really, really small and you just can't trade them. Okay, that happens. Like about two weeks ago when we had those spinning tops, they really weren't tradable. Okay, but almost every other day, you, you need to, I, I, again, I don't give financial advice. These videos are educational purposes over only. Okay, make your own decisions. I got to give that obligatory because, you know, that's the way it is. But I strongly suggest for educational purposes only that you be aware that almost every day in the stock market, particularly in the, in the uh, stock indexes, the candlesticks have range. And guess what? Range is your friend. And only thing you, well, one of the things you want to figure out is how do you make range your profitable friend? Okay, it seems very simplistic. It's a little bit more complicated than just what I'm saying here. But I want you to just remember that every day. Range. Range means opportunity. And how do you tap into it? That's what you want to explore. How do I tap into that range? There's going to be a range that goes upward, right? Part of the range is upward. Part of the range is downward. Some days, almost the entire day is up or down. And let me just rephrase, let me just repeat that one thing right now. Almost the entire day is up or down. That is a huge hint. Pause the video, think about it, write it down. Almost the entire day is up or down. That should just, that right there should just, if you just ponder on that, just that alone could dramatically change your profitability every day. It could dramatically change your life. Okay. Financially. Okay. Someone asked me in the comment section, how long, I don't remember exactly the question. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Give me a second here. I think it was, uh, da, 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 da. okay. I don't have it in front of me, but it, I think the, the question was, how long did it take you to get, uh, I think the word was math. Ma how long did it take you to master this? Well, first of all, you know, first of all, thanks for, for asking that question and, and, and bestowing upon me such a, you know, using the word master. First of all, guys and gals, I don't consider myself a master. If you know, if for those that know me, not know me by now, you know who I consider the master, right? You know who I consider the master of all things. Okay. And he will always be that for me. If you didn't watch the video, and I already mentioned, but I mentioned again, if you didn't watch the video about, um, the video's name is How I Became a Better Trader. Okay, I'll put it, that one in the link, a link in the description of the video too, along with the 75 month cycle link. Okay, if you didn't watch that video, go back and watch it. Because How I Became a Better Trader is in that video. And a lot of people don't want to hear what's in that video. They just, it's like in one ear and out the other. And, and they don't want to hear that it takes time to become really good at something. It takes time. You can't, for 99.9% for .9 of the people, and I don't know the real statistic, guys and gals, I'm just throwing out a number there, but for a, a vast majority of people, you're not going to become an, an expert trader in a short amount of time. You want to know why? You have to overcome your human inst uh, uh, behavior. You have to overcome really bad behavior. You have to overcome behavior that 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 um, prevents you from being profitable. You've heard me talk about it before. 
anxiety, being nervous, t putting the wrong emphasis on money. D those are just so huge. They, they mess up your mind and your inner person, your heart, if you will, and prevent you from being a great trader. Okay. That may not be the answer people are looking for, but I'm not going to BS you on this YouTube channel. I say it like it is. That is the only a small part. Go back, watch the video, how I became a, a better trader. Watch it. It could change your life. It's a, it's a process, guys and gals. It's a process. That's why, it, for those of you that have been watching my video content for a while now, and those that may be new, I'm going to say it again. Always start really, really small with your trades. What do I mean? If you're buying stock, buy one share, five shares, ten. Don't go medium. Don't Definitely don't go big. Be honest with yourself. If you're losing way more than... How much money did you make this, this so far this year? Most of you probably lost more than you made. Some of you probably made more, and that's great. Kudos to you guys and gals. That's awesome. But most of you are probably losing. If, if you're what I call a hit-and-miss trader, then you need to stop making any kind of significant trades, and you need to figure out how to be successful seven or eight times out of ten. And you need... In my opinion, it would behoove you, it would benefit you if you do really small trades. I don't care if it's one share if you're trading stock or five shares. It should be a really, really tiny amount of your portfolio. I mean really small. And why do I say that? Because you can experiment with it without losing any significant amount of money. You can experiment and determine whether you're, you're making the right behavioral changes to become a better trader and or investor. By the way, and traders and investors are different. It has to do with the time frame in which you hold, how long you hold the position, okay? Do that. Start small. Learn how to be really, really good at small trades before you go big. Always use trailing stops to lock in your profit stop losses to cut those things loose when they're running at losses. Don't let them hang around. Okay, let me move on to, we'll come back to this before I close and tell you what I think about tomorrow. I'm not even sure about tomorrow myself. We're, we're at a, I'll, I'll discuss what I think about, to, what I think about tomorrow. Okay, let me just show you, I took a position, I talked about this yesterday, crude oil. There it is. I took two little contracts, upper left-hand corner, this is MCL, M as in Mary, CL, Z21. These are the December contracts for crude oil. I want to mention something about crude oil. It's one of those, <laughs> if you're going to trade futures, you got to pay, pay attention to the contract specifications, particularly the calendar. Crude oil, if it says December, it's going to expire in November, and that catches a lot of people out. It's not like the S&P 500 contracts. It actually closes a month earlier than what the, the contract says. you got to watch that. So it says December. It really means it's going to close in the middle of November. It'll expire. These are future contracts, guys and gals, not options. I almost never trade options anymore. Futures contracts. Okay. So anyway, look to the right of the screen there in the yellow rectangles. You notice I took two contracts. They're running at a $23 profit. Woohoo! I'm excited. Okay. I kept it really, really small. Why? Because I'm not really 100% sure that this thing's going to go up yet. Okay. So I kept it really small. I just got done saying, start small. So this shows you, for those of you out there that think I'm, I'm like this huge successful trader, and I am successful more times than not, and that's great, and I'm thankful for that, and I give God thanks for that, okay? I'm blessed. But you see here, I, um, I still start small. Look how, these two contracts are really small, okay, for me, for my account. This is considered very small, Okay. Because the margin requirements on e-micro crude oil is really small for my account size, okay? So whatever your account size is, you have to make the, the adjustment. For you, it might be one contract is small, okay? For some of you out there, five contracts. Heck, you might have some people watching this video. For them who have really large uh, accounts, big portfolios, they might be, you know, 100,000 there. They might be millionaire, whatever. They got a lot of money. Okay, a lot of assets in their account. They might trade the big contracts, the the the, uh, the main contracts, the CL, so the MCL. That's great. It still applies to you too. 
you know, for them, maybe five contracts is kind of large on the big contracts. So start with one, one big contract. For me, I stick with the e-micros because my account size dictates I stick with the e-micros, okay? So for most of you retail traders, you're probably going to want to trade the, the, the e-micro contracts, okay? So you can see here, I kept it small, only two little contracts. I want to wait to see if the market moves in my favor, and then I'll kind of add on some more contracts and bolster the position, and then as it gets really profitable, I'll lock in my profits, okay? By the way, the e-micro contracts for crude oil are really nice. Every tick is a dollar. I mean, it's simple math. I love it. Good stuff. All right. Um, what did I do for the day? Let me show you two screenshots. Did I make money or lose money? Here's my first uh, position. You can see upper left-hand corner. This was actually, I think, last night. Yeah, this was last night uh, about e uh, almost two hours after the, the futures market opened up. These are the e-micro S&P 500 contracts. To the right in the yellow rectangle, you see it was up basically $700. Okay, it was up 700 bucks at this point. And I, I think that was 13 contracts. Okay. Um, some of you may remember, I think a few days ago or last week, I said, as, as you, you want to lock in your profits because you want to, I remember I talked about booking your profits. Don't leave your positions hanging around. If you got good profitability, use your trillion stop, lock in the profits. When it when the market moves against you and hits your trillion stop, it'll You'll, you'll, you'll lock in your profits, right? The profits will be booked on your account. You want that to happen. You want the cash to bolster your account. You don't want it leaving, in your, leaving it hanging in your positions, okay? And I said, the reason, one of the reasons you want to do that is because now you can take on an extra contract. Well, look, a couple weeks ago, I was doing 12 contracts. Now I'm doing 13. Why? Because my account got larger. Everybody follow me? Lock in your profits. It allows you to take an extra contract like you see me doing here. It isn't. This isn't the only reason. I was able to close some other positions at a profit that kind of helped out. It freed up some of my leverage and I could use some of that leverage in other places like you see me here. But anyway, I'm trying to make the point, right? Book your profits. Don't leave your positions hanging around. Book it. Lock it in. All right. Um, so there's the first screenshot. Let's look at the second screenshot. I'm going to just do one more screenshot here on my, my profit loss for the day. Okay, this was um, today, about 1.30 in the afternoon. You can see to the far right here, I'm up $1,000, okay? Um, so most of the day, uh, from last night throughout today, the candlestick most of the day was green. A lot of back and forth, a lot of up and down. At one point, I was up $1,600. I could have been up $2,000, could have, would have, should have. You know how that goes. So I, ma I made a boo-boo. I, I was up like $1,600 and lost like... And gave back, I should say, 600 bucks. So it happens, guys. This is even to me. I'm not like some, the guy reads the tea leaves and he gets every trade perfect. No, I don't get every trade perfect. Okay, but the point is to be profitable every day as much as possible. Okay. And uh, so there you go. That's my profit loss for the day. So even though today, let's go back to... And, if, and I'm, I'm super grateful for today. I'm a happy camper, okay? I, I feel blessed because I know I'm blessed, and I'm super grateful. I give God thanks, okay? But let's go back and look at the S&P 500 real quick here, okay? Remember I talked about the range, 66 and a half? Okay? And I said yesterday that I thought today would, would be a kind of a, a medium-ish, you know, I thought it would be a green day. And it was most of the day, but not all day. It ended up being a red day with an inverted hammer. Okay? But the range was 66.5. I still made $1,000. Okay, for some of you, that, some of you might, that might translate into $100. Some of you might be $50. Some of it might be two, dollars $300. Some of you might have made three, dollars $4,000 a day or $10,000, whatever. Everybody's account size is different, right? So how did I make $1,000 even though we ended up on a red inverted hammer day, okay? Remember, range, 66.5. You have to figure out how to take advantage of range, guys and gals, okay? All right, so 
as we're looking at the S&P 500 here and I'm, and I'm getting ready to, to, to close up this video, you know, um, what do I think about tomorrow? Well, we do not have confirmation that this market is turned and is in a rebound, right? We don't have confirmation that, that we have upward price action, right? We don't have any green candlesticks going on here. We're at the, we're at the very bottom of a cycle low on the daily cycle. And that's good. Inverted hammer is like giving us a strong indication that, you know, we're about to move upward in price. But it hasn't happened yet. And I always, almost always advocate on this channel, okay, that we wait for the market to confirm that price is going up. Okay, because it hasn't actually confirmed. We still got the stochastic momentum index just hanging around down there. Okay. The Big Daddy forecast isn't a whole lot of help down here at the bottom, wall, walling around the bottom. So I don't really, you know, I'm not even going to talk about the Big Daddy forecast right now because it, it's, it, it doesn't have any real meaningful value right now. Okay. At the very bottom, the Dow Jones transportation, the divergence continues. Okay. And remember, remember that 75-month cycle. That's got to keep that in the back of the old noodle at all times for the next few months at least, okay? So what am I really saying about tomorrow? I'm saying we need confirmation before we make any decisions, okay? I don't think this is a time to be making any um, hard decisions about short or long. You gotta, sometimes there's gonna be days, just take it easy, take a couple deep breaths, try to control that behavior. Don't get overexcited, okay? Some days are going to be quiet days. The market may be crazy busy tomorrow, okay? But I, for those of you guys and gals that have to work a day job, that you got to take care of the kids, you know, you got to go do what you got to do. You don't have a, you're not sitting in front of the computer all day, right? Well, if it was me and I was in, in those, that type of, you know, life where you get, you're super busy, I would not take a position tomorrow. I'd wait. If you do feel compelled to take a position, I would advocate keep it really, really small. Because if you have to cut that sucker loose, at least you won't be taking any big losses. Okay? So that's my take on that. Will I take a position uh, at the open of the futures market today? Or no, not at the open necessarily, but will I take a position uh, as we go into the next session? Yeah, probably. But... And, and this is, I don't want everybody to think this is an arrogant statement because I don't want to come across as being arrogant, okay? But, you know, there's a certain maturity that comes along with being a, a trader. There, there does come a place in your trading where there's a little bit of maturity that comes, okay? And you may be able to navigate uncertain markets better than, than, than most people, okay? And I say may because like I just admitted a little while ago, I had to trade a $600 uh, I gave back $600 today. I still had a really profitable day, but I gave back 600 bucks. So I'm not immune to bad trades. But there's a certain maturity that comes over time. It, it, you know, it takes time to become a really good trader. And guys and gals, I'm learning every day, just like you are, trying to get better every day. Because if I was all that, and if I was so great, then why did I have a trade that went $600 against me today, right? So I ain't all that, guys and gals. I'm just like you in some ways. I'm still trying to learn. It's just I may be at a different place in my learning process, right? I may be further along in my learning process than a lot of you that are watching this video, but it doesn't mean the learning stops. It never stops. We never stop learning in life. All right, the video's getting kind of long. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to click that little bell because that little bell will give you a notification of all the videos as I put them out. We'll talk to you all real soon again next time.